Welcome back to Learn to Quilt series. Today, we're gonna to get started on making our quilt, our very first block. We'll be starting with the red block. Red is one of my favorite colors, and this is the rail fence block. So just like you learned in our first video, whenever we're getting ready to cut fabric, the first thing we wanna do is use some sizing, get that all nice and ironed out, and cut our strips very accurately. So I'll skip over those steps because it's the same thing. It's the same disciplines and we're just gonna jump right into the quilt block. So um, you've obviously used your sizing, everything's ready to go. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, the first time that I ever ironed red, um, I was really surprised how the color changed. I wanted to just show you that today. Um, if you heat up red, notice how it changes. Let's see here, let's get it really heated up. And you're gonna notice that it can turn a lot darker. Don't worry, it does return to its normal color. I don't know if you can see it very much. It's definitely darker. It kind of threw me the first time that I, I'm like, what? what, did I just ruin my fabric? No, I did not ruin my fabric. That's just a normal part of how red in particular or blue even behaves with heat. So we've got, we're going to need two, uh, two inch strips of each fabric. I'm gonna remind you, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that. That way you know when the videos come out. Also, go to that homepage of Shabby Fabrics, click on the free download. That's going to have all the measurements that you need to cut your strips to and how many strips to cut them to and in your basic information of how to put the block together. So don't forget the free download. And again, share the good news of quilting with your friend. Maybe do, maybe do this series with a friend. Um, okay, so we, as you can see, we have three different fabrics, a white, a tone on tone, red on red polka dot, a red and white polka dot, and a red solid. I've cut the strips ahead of time to save us a little bit of time on camera. So I'm gonna put that big ruler away. I certainly would have used it to cut those, but now that we'll be sub cutting them, I'm into my smaller ruler again, which I really like the smaller ruler. Um, so when we sew strips together, let's just lay that out in the actual sequence that that block is. That's one of the first things I always recommend that you do is you lay your fabrics out and make sure that what you have here is how you want to, how you want your block to look. Is that how, does that match this site picture? It absolutely does. Now you would think that, or at least I thought early on, I would sew this strip to this one and this one to this one, and this one to this one in this big long chain. What I found is my strip sets were kind of distorted. Strip set, new word. Strips sewn together are a strip set, a very common type of construction in a quilt. Um, especially if you're using a jelly roll, which we introduced in the first video, which are two and a half inch wide strips. They're already pre-cut for you. They're so convenient to just sew together down that long side and you make a strip set. It makes quilting go very quickly, especially if you're trying to put a project together fast for a gift. Um, baby showers in particular, quick little baby gift is a, is a nice one to make out of jelly rolls. Um, so once I've laid them out and said, yes, that's my design, the first thing that I would do is I literally just flip that to this, right sides together now, one stacked on top of each of the other, and take that to the sewing machine and sew the quarter inch just like we did before. Again, you don't need to see me sew now. I've already done that with you. If we introduce any type of special stitching later on, I will certainly show that. But to save time, just like we did in the first video, a good quarter inch seam allowance. Sew very consistently all the way down the length of that. And again, you'll do the same thing here. Now we've done that ahead of time. So let me just bring that out so you've seen what we've done thus far. So there's that one. And oh, and they're different lengths. We've been kind of playing around with fabric in here and that's fine. Obviously your strips will be a little bit longer. So let's put those aside for now. Um, once you have those two strip units at this point, I would call it strip sets, I suppose, you're going to take this to your ironing mat. Now, one of the things that can happen with strip sets is they kind of have this kind of arc to them. You do not want that. One of the things that we've discovered as human nature is when we iron with our pressing mat or ironing mat horizontally, we tend to do this sweeping motion across our body in kind of an arc. It's just nature, right? We don't typically move our arm this way. 
we move our arm this way toward ourselves. And that's what I've discovered is when I iron that way, my fabric tends to have this kind of rainbow effect. So if you have your pressing mat or your ironing and you're kind of alongside it and you're pressing vertically up the strip, it tends to avoid that rainbow effect that can give you that slight distortion. So the first thing we kind of set seams before you saw me do that is I'm going to just set that seam again. This is just warming this fabric up so it's a little more pliable in my hands. And I'm just going to press with my hands to the right. So that seam should be scooting underneath the right all the way down. And as I'm pressing, I'm feeling that. Is that seam behaving and it's going that direction? And I'm just kind of following along here, making sure that seam is where it belongs. Now, sometimes I'll take a quick peek. Is that, was that where I'm, yes, it's behaving, it's all to the right. And then I might go back and just give it a few more presses. Now you can see that little bit of discoloration. I don't know if you overhead cameras picking that up, but I can see that it just fades away as the fabric cools. All right, so that one's done. Now, let's just make sure. So that one's gonna be on my, I'm looking at this top section right here. That's going to be over here, and this is going to be here. So let's do the same thing. Let's set that seam with some heat. And with our fingers, we're going to press that to the right. That way, all of my seams here are going one direction or the not another. It doesn't really matter in this instance if your seams went to the left, but make them all go that way or all go to the right versus kind of a mixing and a matching. Again, just a good discipline. Um, usually I press to darker colors in this instance, just because of the way I started this, we're now pressing toward the white, but you notice I'm not seeing any discoloration. It doesn't seem to be a factor. You can sometimes press toward a lighter color and it's not an issue. So let's just make sure that's going to behave itself. I kind of let that cool down for a second. Let's press. All right. Enough of that pressing business. You've seen me press before. So. Now I've got these two sections. Obviously, they're vastly different lengths. Just for our purposes, I'm going to probably just quickly just reduce that. So it's not quite so obviously longer. And I'll probably do the same thing down here. Now, obviously, this is not accurate cutting. I'm just eyeballing it at this point. You get the idea. My whole point right now is to show you how to put a strip set together. That's all there is about the rail fence block. And consequently, you'll need to make two strip sets because you won't be able to get four of these out of one strip set. So you have enough fabric in your kit if you've purchased the um, kit if, um, to do two strip sets. If you're working on your, with your own fabric, you'll make two of these units. Um, again, one, two pieces, two pieces, right side together, as you would expect, quarter inch seam, we're going to open that, set the seam, press to the right. We've done that ahead of time, and that's what that unit is going to look like with all the seams pressing in one direction or the other. You pick your favorite direction. Um, now we've got this thing, right? And you have these jagged edges. Even though it's from the same fabric company, I have never had the strip sets be the same. They might all start exactly, you know, the same spot, but they don't always end. I don't know, never been able to figure it out in 20 years, but so you typically will square up. Now I would most likely, if this was cutting me, I would probably start at this end because it's less to square up, but let's start down here. Let's say that you wanna start down here. I've got all these salvages to deal with and clean up. I can see them, I'm not sure if you can. How I'm gonna square this up is I have my bottom of my strip set parallel with a line on my mat. Let's get some, some kind of squareness going on. Let me grab my glasses so I can see what I'm doing here. Grab my rotary cutter, and this is where the small ruler comes in so handy again. This is that four and a half by eight and a half creative grid that's in your uh, Notions kit, also available by itself if you already have your Notions and just want to add to your sewing room. This is a beautiful addition. I'm just going to, so I'm just going to line up here. Let's get something going on. Now with this particular rail fence block, um, we're going to cut six and a half inch 
I'm just going to double check my notes. Pretty sure it's six and a half inches. Yes. So, and that makes sense because when you sew four strips together that were cut to two, this is one and a half, one and a half, one and three quarters, one and three quarters. This is six and a half right now. I'm going to cut one, two, three, four, five, six. See this longer line here and here? Though, right here, these are the lines. And I can also kind of verify this on my ruler, right? So I have this consistent line and I like to double check one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Oh, nope. I wasn't on that line. Do you see that? I've been doing this 20 years. I still screw up. I, my seam ripper gets a lot of exercise. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. I'm comfortable with that. I am going to just hold that good and steady. Fingers on, pinky and ring finger is um, securing that. And I make my cut. So that's my first section. And you're going to make four of those. So once those are ready to go, now you're going to lay that out on your table. Don't skip this step. Don't skip this step. <laughs> I have like, I know, I know how this is going to go together. I just kind of take those over the sewing machine, start sewing them together, figure out one is wrong, and now I'm seam ripping and I'm wasting time. So notice how white is always, the white's coming together in the center. So it's smart to go ahead and lay out your quilt. Um, I got myself confused. Quilt blocks and make sure, is this what it's supposed to look like? The whites all come in together. Yes, it looks good. Now we have four things that we may need to make. One, how are we going to do that? Just like before when we had two pieces of fabric and you flip them right sides together and make kind of a sandwich, we're going to do the same thing, same idea. So we're simply going to flip this. And now I'm going to introduce some pins, right? I need to make sure that nothing's moving while we're at the sewing machine. We haven't used pins until now. And this is when they come into play. Magnetic pin cushion. I love it. You spill your pins. Look at that. It just goes and cleans them up. So I really love magnetic pin cushions. Um, I've definitely dropped my pins on more than one occasion. Glass head pins, again, part of your notions kit. I love these. They're just delicate, little, strong. I've got a couple extra needles here. Let's get those out of the way. Um, they're super strong. I like them because they don't disturb the fabric very much. Typically, we'll pin here and probably down at the very end because I know this has to happen and I know this has to happen. So I typically pin the front or pin the beginning and pin the end and then might put a pin or two along the way. When we pin the top row to the bottom row, I'm going to be using more pins and you're going to see why. But for now, let's go ahead and take this to our sewing machine. I might even move that one down. Um, quarter inch seam. So let's go, let's go do this. Okay, just a reminder, if you haven't gotten that quarter inch quilting foot, um, we, can, we can make do with our tape like we did. Just gonna make sure this is set. I'm going to be riding that fabric right along that black uh, tape. Hanging on to my thread. I keep this handy so that as, I might even push this out. So I, as I'm taking the pins off, I'm putting them on my magnetic um, pin cushion. Now I do not personally sew across pins. I know a certain amount of people do that. I don't do that. I'm always worried about um, damaging my machine by doing that. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who, who have never had a problem. I'm always concerned about that. So as a matter of habit, I take them out. Normally I pull them out where I don't have to lift the pressure foot like that. Let's keep going. Fabric's riding along my black tape. Okay, I'm gonna break that thread with my 
uh, scissors, we're just going to snip those threads. Okay. Now let's talk about seam allowance, um, seam, the seam allowance. Which direction to press in? Well, there's a lot of seams here, but there's nothing here. So in this instance, it's, it's, at, well, look at this. You decide, it's obvious, right? The fabric almost decides for you where it wants to go. Path of least resistance, right? That's just a law of nature. Um, water flows downhill, gravity, right? This wants to go this way because there's a lot more seams going on. Let it happen. You want to go where, where the fabric naturally wants to press. So let's go ahead. We're going to set our seam. It wants to go toward that white. Let's go with it. <laughs> let's go with what it wants to happen. I'm just going to make sure that is nice and pressed flat. Beautiful. Sometimes if you press from the back side, I learned this from my friend Tammy. You're going to be seeing her on video soon. Um, very talented, funny lady. I can't wait for to introduce you to Tammy. She explained to me that if you press from the back side, you could potentially get a tuck kind of in the front. And so I am now making a habit. See, you still learn. 20, 20 years later, I'm still learning all this stuff. Um, a pressing from the front. That way I could see if I have a little bit of a tuck in there. Um, so you get the idea that when the fabric wants to press in another direction, let it go there. Just go with the flow, right? So we're going to do that for the top and we would of course do that for the bottom. Now we have something called the interlocking seam. What is Jennifer talking about? What I'm talking about here is in the top row, my seam is going to the left. In the bottom row, my seam is going to the right. You can see how it is very important that this intersection line up and our block is not like this or like this, but it is exactly vertical. With that in mind, I simply stack that and this seems going left, this seems going right, and they nest. You might have heard the term nested seams. This is what we're talking about. This is why pressing is so important and how in rows of a quilt or blocks of a quilt or sections of a block, you want to think about seam allowance direction because you want interlocking seams. If I had both seams going this direction, there is a weird bump over here. There is one, two, three, four, five, six layers of fabric here, and that'd be two on the right. I do not have a balanced scenario. I'm gonna have literally like a little tiny bump. So give seam allowance the respect that it's due. Um, it does help your blocks lay beautifully together um, and piece beautifully together. So because this is the most important part right now of this block, I'm pinning that first. This must come together accurately. So I can feel with my fingers when those lie beautifully flat. And I am going to put a needle right there. I might even put it slightly lower. But you can be sure I'm not going to pull that pin before I absolutely have to. And I'm going to put one at the very beginning. We know that needs to stay nice and put together. And you could pin here. As a beginner quilter, you may be tempted to skip on pinning. Don't do it. If you skip on pinning, you'll simply seam rip more. That was what the lesson I learned is my quilts either, my blocks either were just not that good. I was a little bit embarrassed by them. Um, or I was, if that was really off, I did seam rip and then I was wasting time and nobody wants to seam rip. It, it's like one of my least favorite things. At least if you do seam rip, you have an awesome clover seam ripper to do it. So I've pinned right now. When I take this to the sewing machine, I'm going to do my quarter inch seam, but with special care, at that particular intersection. Let's go to our sewing machine. Let's get our magnetic pin cushion. 
Our block is nearly done. You are doing so good. You're hanging in there, following along. Here we go. There is that intersection. Notice how I'm waiting on that pin. I am getting very close to it, maybe even hand cranking the machine, and now I'm gonna lift it away. Don't take that pin out too soon. These other pin, pins, eh, take them out. You don't really, you kinda, of, I slow my pace um, and take them out, but I don't have to come to a complete stop the way that I did at that intersection. Break that there, let's trim off that thread. And to me, this is like the big reveal, right? How, how well did you do? Um, so let's find out. We're, we're doing this live together, let's find out. Goodness knows if I didn't do it very accurately, I'm gonna seam rip that. Let's press this open. Let's, let's have a look here. I think we did a good job. We did a really good job. So well done. Now, what do you do with a seam allowance? You've got a couple options here. Some people at this point would do press this seam open, but do you see how this wants to go to the path of least resistance? It wants to go to the white. This wants to go to the white. So now what do you do? Something cool that Tammy taught me is we're going to comply with what this fabric naturally wants to do. And we are going to pr press that seam allowance to the white each time. This is the cool, coolest thing I've learned recently. I can't wait to show this to you. I get all excited about stuff like this. But we're gonna press to that white. And here, that part that wants to go Notice I am pressing right now from the backside, but I'm also kind of pulling slightly, I don't even want to say pull, kind of encouraging this to go this direction so I don't get a tuck back here. This one wants to go to this direction, and this one wants to go here. How do we split this difference? When we do this, when you open this up, this will lie. Sometimes if you, you don't want to reinforce at the very beginning when you start sewing your strips together, because if you do that, what I, the step I'm doing right now won't be possible. And then you're going to probably have to press your seams open. So if you're struggling with this step, if it's not working for you, um, if you just kind of open up that, where that kind of confluence of seams comes together, they will lay down into this little tiny, almost four patch. Let me just press it here so you can see it. Why do that versus just pressing seams open? Um, it's just because it makes the quilt lay, quilt block lie a little bit flatter so that when you um, run your hand over that block, it doesn't have kind of a funny bump. If you press your seam open, don't worry. If you do decide to press the seam open, it's just what it says. You're just going to simply press the seam open. You press the fabric back onto itself, or you're just gonna to press to one side, press to one side. But this is a really cool way, if you can manage it, to get that seam open and have a little swirl. And then the quilt block kind of doesn't have quite as much of the bump in the center where everything comes together. Now. This quilt block, unfinished, which is what it is right now, right? Finished means it's sewn into the quilt, should measure 12 and a half inches. Uh, let me start at my 10, because I'm the cord's kind of in the way. So 10 plus 12 and a half should be 22 and a half. And look at that, we're right on the mark. Let's measure it both directions. So that's, that's the true test. We did good, we did a good job. So well done. Now, if you got the kit, if you bought a kit, you also got a heart shabby shape. That is your very first kit, shabby shape. And put that aside for now. That will be used at the very end when you get to do the bonus project. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. We'll be back soon to do 
block three. You've got the scrap fabric, right? That was part of your kit, that practice fabric. Go keep practicing. You can also just keep practicing those strip sets and I'll see you soon for video three.